exactly the same as the real ones. This one's actually made out of um, leftover parts. Um, some of it is real, some of it is just a model. Um, with all of our spacecraft, usually they're launched one of two ways. They're usually launched either in a big rocket or in a space shuttle. Um, regardless of which one that they're launched in, all the spacecraft have to be able to compact on, or compress to shrink down in order to fit whatever launch vehicle they're put in. So the way this spacecraft actually looks is not um, when it was launched, it didn't actually look like this. The left arm and the right arm were actually folded into itself uh, when it launched, and once it got up, it popped open. And uh, once it opens up, it pretty much stays open, doesn't fold back down. Um, both of these spacecraft were launched in 1977, one month apart from each other, uh, one in August, one in September. They actually just had their 25th anniversary about a month ago. Um, they were actually both still in space. Um, both are working. We still receive signals from them. Um, so both of them are still doing pretty well. Um, they've been flying for 25 years now, and even though they've been flying for that long, they still have not left our solar system. Um, they're actually the furthest man-made objects in space. Currently, Voyager 1 is about um, 7.93 billion miles away. Um, it's traveling. It's also the fastest moving object in space. It's traveling around 40,000 miles an hour. If you multiply that times 24 hours in a day, it covers nearly almost a million miles every single day. It gets further and further away from us. Um, right now, um, right now its main mission is, is so far away from us now that for the most part they've turned off most of the systems on it, they've turned off the cameras, uh, turned off most of the experiments, there's one or two things still running on it. Um, its main mission now is it's basically looking for the edge of our solar system. Um, where exactly that is, is we're not really sure. Um, that's what we're looking for. Uh, depending on what criteria you use, there's different locations. For this particular mission, we're using what's called um, termination shock, which is basically um, there's particles, uh, ionized particles that come from our sun called the solar wind that go in all directions, and it tra they travel at supersonic speeds. Now, where those particles kind of run into what's called the interstellar wind, which is also particles from other suns outside of our own that, are, that run into our, uh, our solar wind, and they kind of slow each other down. And where that kind of runs into each other is called the termination shock, and that's what the spacecraft are looking for now, that point in space where those kind of run into each other and those uh, solar winds start to decelerate, slow down a little bit. Inside is a needle, photograph needle, and the photograph, I'd always thought, how are they supposed to work out that you should use this needle together with the grooves and spin it, etc. But I can just imagine giving this to a teenager today and they wouldn't have any. And it forms the circle, it's supposed to tell you that's the first image. Um, this part is supposed to be the um, hydrogen atom, which is the most common abundant <coughs> element in the entire universe. Um, but I'm not sure what this other one is over here and this one. That's, um, that's a picture of the record it's needle. The record the needle record. Is sitting on it, right? And this is supposed to be the speed that it's supposed to be spinning at, I believe. But there's a little chart here that kind of describes it a little bit. I'll let you guys kind of... one launched in 98. And this one is the one that was launched in 2000. In 98, this design flew to Mars to go into orbit, same kind of deal. Um, but you'll notice it's asymmetric. Um, all the spacecraft that we've flown that have been solar panels uh, have been symmetric, the same kind of panel on both sides. Okay. Like this. Um, it turns out that the calculations that were done on where it was did not account properly for the solar wind pressing on one side not both. So when the final maneuver was sent up to the spacecraft to fly by the planet and then go into orbit, uh, it was wrong because the spacecraft was actually in a different place. So instead of going by at 200 kilometer altitude from the surface of Mars and then going around, it went 58 kilometers past the surface and burned up in the atmosphere. So this is, a, this is an example of things going wrong for the most trivial of reasons. And uh, yes, this one could have had that problem, but it's not asymmetric. Well, no, it wasn't here. Okay, okay. Was it was the industry partner. <laughs> <laughs>
It was so expensive to make, they couldn't figure out really what to use it for and stuff. And it sat on the <laughs> shelf for many, many, many years until like the 80s um, when it was kind of revived again. Uh, but this material is pretty interesting because uh, it actually holds six world's records. It's the least um, dense material in the entire world. Um, it's one of, it, at its highest form, it can be as much as 99.8% air. Um, it's nearly almost nothing. Um, it's made out of silica gel. It's uh, kind of like those are, uh, if you've ever bought new pairs of shoes, you get those little um, packages with little silica balls and stuff. That's basically the same material. Um, they take that, put it into a solution. I'm not really sure what chemicals they use, but um, there's a whole process to it. Turns into kind of like a gelatin state. Um, then they put it into molds, and then they dry it. Normally, when you dry things, though, you usually use heat and you use, put them in the ovens and you cook them. Um, but what they do is actually they put it through um, a process called supercritical drying, where they use high pressure to actually squeeze all the water out, and it solidifies and turns into this material. Um, it's kind of similar to like styrofoam. It's very strong, but very lightweight. Um, but it's kind of toxic. It's also toxic, though. So that's what's in the container like this. Um, it's, uh, if you dropped it on something, it actually kind of ring like a bell. Um, if you took a block of it, uh, maybe six feet tall, maybe an inch thick, but this wide, you laid it down on the ground, you took a subcompact car like a Volkswagen Bug, and you played it, placed it right on top of it, and you distributed the weight evenly across the entire surface, that block could actually hold up the entire car. Um, if you could actually pick up that same block with one hand because it weighed about a pound. So it's very lightweight but very strong. Um, the weird thing about it is it's strong that way, but if you took your finger and went, shh, it'd actually fall apart and break apart like brittle glass. Um, it's also a very good thermal insulator. They use it as insulator for like the 1997 um, Pathfinder Sojourner mission um, to keep the internal um, electronics of the actual rover warm. Um, they've done experiments with it where they've taken blocks of it, maybe not even an inch thick, and took in like a Bunsen burner torch underneath and put Crayolas and the Crayolas wouldn't melt. Um, put flour on there and the flour wouldn't wilt. Um, scientists have actually put their hands on it and while it's burning and none of the heat would go through. Um, one of the guys that worked on this was mentioning that if we could use this to insulate our house instead of like the spun fiberglass that we use now, um, if we could use this to ins insulate the entire house and you never open your door and you never open your window, you could actually heat up the whole house with one candle forever. <laughs> and you'd suffocate to death, but then you'd be warm. <laughs> but this is just to give you an idea of how big these dishes are. Um, this is a model of the 70 meter dish, which each location has at least one of these big dishes at it. Um, this building to the right of this model is actually that building directly in front of us, which we're going to walk through right now. And that building is our main administration building. It's nine stories tall. And you can see from the model here that it's well bigger than the building. Um, 70 meters across, it's almost the size of a football field, so um, very large. <laughs> okay, if you just follow me. We'll This is real, by the way. This is an animation. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> Look at the shadow of the. It's working its way through the lift off transients. It's looking good. This was launched um, in Florida, so that's um, the Atlantic coast right there. Thick atmosphere and the moth buffeting, we are now supersonic. Those solid rockets that you see are going to fall off. Controls and reactions settling down a little bit as we uh, are in the supersonic range. We're now approaching max Q. Stage systems still look good. There it is, we passed max Q. Vehicle response is normal. Things are really settling down on the Verdians. Solid motors are beginning to tail off. Plus 60 seconds. 